I mentioned uh, that uh, uh, in uh, a few uh, days, on the 27th, I believe, there will be a uh, Republic of Korea-China summit uh, in uh, Beijing. Uh, now, uh, I wonder if perhaps uh, uh, Winston Lord, uh, Ambassador Lord and Evans uh, Revere could uh, talk to the symbolic and substantive importance of this summit. There, there are a number, number of interesting things about it. Um, we have two new leaders uh, of the Republic of Korea and China involved for the first time. Uh, also, it has not been traditional for a new uh, a Korean leader uh, to make the, uh, it's traditional to have the U.S. be the first summit for a new Korean leader, but uh, usually the second has been Japan. In this case, Japan is being bypassed, if I can put it that way, and uh, the, uh, the second summit uh, will be with uh, China. Uh, also, it's interesting that uh, the Chinese leadership will be meeting uh, with uh, President Park before there has been a summit between the North Korean new, relatively new North Korean leader and uh, the new Chinese leader. Um, in the background, of course, we know uh, that uh, uh, China in recent years has a, a acquired uh, uh, because of uh, North Korean belligerence and intransigence towards its other neighbors has in, uh, acquired uh, perhaps uh, the, uh, the uh, highest degree of exclusive outside leverage in uh, Pyongyang uh, that it has ever had. Uh, and uh, of course China has for a number of years been uh, the Republic of Korea's uh, number one trading partner. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, importance in this summit. Uh, I wonder if you could, uh, uh, Ambassador Lord, uh, maybe speak to the Chinese side's expectations. Okay. Uh, first, a quick segue. You mentioned Japan. There's some feeling in Japan that they're jealous of this two-day informal summit meeting with uh, Obama in California, whereas uh, Abe came here quickly. Uh, had a pretty good meeting, but it was more of a working uh, one-day affair. Then you follow that up, as you just pointed out, with uh, South Korea's second summit being with China uh, and not with Japan. Uh, Japan has already got an inferiority complex about its decline in the world. Abe's trying to reverse that, uh, and so this is going to, I think, maybe feed into that. So I think we have to pay close attention to our relations with Japan uh, because they're absolutely crucial. And I share uh, Evans's concern about the, the South Korean Japanese tensions. This is really a, a serious problem. So I, I think that point has to be kept in mind. Now, with respect to the China hosting of this summit, they're going to straddle as they always have. As you just mentioned, they have these tremendous economic interests with South Korea. Uh, but as Evans and I have both said, they're not going to walk away from North Korea. The rhetoric may be more balanced, uh, but. They provide, and correct me if I'm wrong, something like 90% of the energy and 50% of the food. And even as they've been saying they're going to you know, follow UN sanctions, which they've done before. It's nothing new, by the way. They go ahead and dilute them and undercut them. Uh, their investment and their building bridges across the North Korean border with China, all this goes on. So that safety net's going to continue there. They're still worried, as I said earlier, about a unified career with potential American troops. Uh, having said that, of course the Chinese are increasingly frustrated uh, with North Korea. First, the real danger of war breaking out. Uh, and in past crises and the most recent ones, we have undoubtedly said to the Chinese, you better tell your North Korean friends that not only will there be a response if there's a military action again, like there was a couple of years ago, but it will be disproportionate. And if you hit a village, we're going to hit three villages or you know, whatever. Uh, secondly, uh, there's some talk, I don't frankly believe it, but uh, nevertheless it ought to make the Chinese a little nervous, some talk in both Japan and South Korea about they need their own nuclear weapons, and this is clearly not in China's interest, but it's fueled by North Korea's uh, posture. Uh, thirdly, uh, American rebalancing is much more than military, and it's not all directed at China. It's because Asia is the most important region for us. It's got many diplomatic, uh, regional institutions, and economic dimensions beyond the military. Having said that, North Korean provocations, uh, a, a fueling a response in the region, as well as China's assertiveness, and a buildup of alliances and exercises and exchanges, uh, and, and so this can't be in China's interest either. So for all these reasons, 
North Korea is undercutting China's national interest. And so that's another reason to be somewhat more balanced than there has been in the past. But I, I think they will give a friendly reception uh, to Park. Uh, but I don't think you're going to see any major change in their posture. Thank you.